Francis is one of the few people in Uganda driving an electric motorbike. He sees a lot of advantages to it. Number one, it is silent. Number two, it doesn't consume fuel at all. Number three, via, via hills, it climbs very well. Okia's food delivery is being eagerly awaited by a pregnant customer. Since he saves on fuel, he can charge less than his competitors. He's actually very cheap, cheaper than any other border guys. I think uh, they do, the other people double their price. So literally it has been convenient for me. In Kampala alone, there are about 130,000 motorcycles or border borders. The masses of motorized vehicles generate a huge amount of air pollution. That is why the United Nations Environment Program provides advice and financial support for electric mobility in Eastern Africa. We need intermediary responses, we need intermediary interventions and electric mobility is one of those because it is easier to adopt, it requires little infrastructure, they emit, they don't emit, so you can have a complete switchover and go on a low carbon development path. That path requires pioneers like Ben Lokeris Koryang and Jacob Hornbach. The graduates of Aachen University in Germany had a pragmatic idea. Take the already existing fuel motorbikes in Kampala and transform them into electric bikes. So all we remove is what you call the petrol powertrain, petrol driven powertrain, and we put an electric powertrain. So as you can see, it's the same bike. Uh, fuel tank is empty, of course. Um, and what we put inside is mainly a controller, an electric controller, an electric motor, a battery as a source of power, replacing the fuel tank, and some digital controls and a throttle. Lithium-ion batteries recovered from old laptops are assembled into rechargeable battery units for the e-bike. And the recycling loop continues even when the batteries become too weak to use in the e-bikes. So what we do is get the newer batteries, use it for e-mobility. After that, when they lose a bit of power, we either put it, we put it in storage systems, you know, like power banks, you know, power reserves. And once it loses again, you know, loses a bit of power, we, we go to torches and other smaller applications before it goes to, to, to be disposed. Delivery man Francis Okia is one of the 20 drivers testing the transformed bikes. On average, he has to return to border work twice a day to recharge. He rents the batteries for the equivalent of less than 3 euros a day. All in all, this has cut his operating costs by half. But there is still one thing that bothers him. We won't have one place where we, where we swap the batteries. Yeah. That is the disadvantage I always get. The feedback that we are getting from the border guys is also awesome because it, it doubles their income. Uh, so families, school fees, we see kids being brought from the village that are now schooling in Kampala because the riders have more money. This rider is German engineer Daniel Dreher. He had worked for a solar energy company for several years before he decided to try to make Kampala's motorbikes cleaner. With his startup Zembo, he now imports cutting-edge electric motorbikes from China. Each one sells for about a thousand euros. That's quite a bit of money. But the drivers can pay over a period of two years. And the e-bikes are tailored to their specific needs here. Our driving mode is different than a Chinese person commuting to work. Here we really look into productive use and hundreds of kilometers every day. Good ride. This is a good ride. Okay. How many how many customers did you have? Good. All deliveries. The startup has sold 20 e-bikes so far, and they expect 80 more within the next two months. Zembo is already creating employment. Sarah Tabu 
couldn't find a job for two years. Now she's in charge of marketing. Actually, it makes me feel very, very proud of myself that I'm contributing a lot uh, to be part of the, the great team which is actually contributing to, uh, to, to e-mobility. For a small fee of just over half a euro, a Zembo driver can exchange an empty battery for a fully charged one. The Zembo e-bikes are fully green since the electricity comes from the solar energy array on top of the company's building. This green technology behind Francis Okia's deliveries is a sign of hope in two ways. Providing for people's needs in the lockdown and for a cleaner country once the pandemic is over.